got to get some sleep. We're going to hit that bed. Oh, boy, that bed's going to hit me back. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. Wait a second. It's a Friday night. What am I doing with a Young Buck shirt on? That's right. I actually managed to catch a little bit of AEW. Yep, I went up. I had to deliver some Christmas gifts for Santa. Who is my next-door neighbor? That might be on the next video. I have legitimate pictures of Santa Claus. I'm cool. So I'm here to talk about both AEW and some SmackDown. But first of all, let's see here. I do have some shout-outs to give. Let's see here. Patrick YMW. You, sir. I think I remember you. I don't think you got this one. You, sir, just barely made it in because you beat that six count. And you know what, Gift Skull? Now that I know how to pronounce your name, you, sir, are a master of the air guitar.
With all that being said, let's get to the first part of the show. Because it happened on Wednesday. So my notes are a little bit odd today. But let's talk about some AEW. Interesting show. It wasn't bad. Very tag team heavy. But again, that's their specialty. Even the women's tag team. Granted, they had an NWA person in there. Ivelisse is from the one, the only Lucha Underground. Big Swall was hidden for the most part. Good stuff. So, AEW starts off with a hearty party taking on Hangman Adam. Oh, he's literate, finally. I wonder if I'm tired. I've had these shorts Jeez, since high school. Again, if you can wear shorts you wore in high school, not many people can actually say that. Um, so we have the Hardy Party taking on Hangman Adam Page and the Dark Order, mainly of Reynolds and Silver. Um, very classic wrestling match to start off. I do need that day off. My fingers are. My fingers are. I only. I, I hope to God it's not carpal tunnel syndrome, or that I damage something in my fingers. It's just like numb feeling. Lost all feeling in my like ring finger fingertips. That's not good. Enough about my maladies, though. Um, Hardy Party versus P at Hangman Adam Page. Aye, aye, aye. And Silver and Reynolds. Uh, starts off as a very classic wrestling match. Actually, really good. Um, Hardy versus Page. This is classic. Um, Hardy puts on a little bit of a clinic, showing the young guy Page, hey, this is how, how you do this. Really fun stuff. Um, then eventually, uh, the heels take the ring. You have the double team by Page and Silver. Ironically, they work, they work where they work well together. Uh, the Dark Order, Reynolds and Silver, have great t double team moves. I really like the fact that they know how to double team. Private Party again, this is their turn to shine. They start some double team moves, and good stuff. They did the um, throw in, into a into a double something. I forget what I want. Oh, oh, like. That, that double team is like a, some moonsault code breaker type thing. Yeah, the guy's like, the one, uh, I think it was Reynolds was on the one guy's knees in like a code breaker position. No, yeah, no, more like a lung blower or, or backstabber position. Was it the other way? I don't know. Whatever it was, it was a moonsault on top of that. That had to, I don't care what they say, that had to leave a mark somewhere. But it was good though. Um, <laughs> uh, Silver and Hardy then went at it a little bit. That was so good. Um, Silver actually, actually had a brain buster on Hardy. That was amazing. WWE, a few wrestlers are allowed the brain buster. Not all of them. They do have to bring that back more. And tomorrow I have to start deleting videos. Maybe I'll do that. When can I do that? I have to do that too. Shoot. I'll find time to do it. I just want to get these videos done so I can sleep. A lot of sleep, too. Because it's the end of the week. I'm, like, sleep depraved. I think I've been getting, like, six hours of sleep a day. Now I get to sleep for, like, a good solid eight and a half, nine hours. That's amazing. Then in a few days, I get to sleep until 10 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock in the morning? I don't know what I'm going to do. But enough about, the, about that, though. Um, and Paige gets a hot tag. He tries like a version of the buckshot lariat. And I say, No, he only gets it because he's only too sweet for that. Uh, Reynolds got in for a little bit. Then there was the Dark Order double team. Then it was the private party, Gin and Juice. And the Hardy Party won because. They cheated because Private Party cheated. They actually pulled the trunks. Oh, no, that was some other match. Yeah, I only know Hardy Party won the gin and juice. Adam Page seems to test it. Silver and Reynolds, hey, this is status quo for them. I'll tell you what. No, we heard the delete, delete, delete chance. It's always good to hear those come back. I'll tell you what. Hardy Party won. Solid cheeseburger match.
and Cody Rhodes. Congratulations there. Yes, you're going to be a proud papa. For we had the Cody Rhodes Christmas gift and Brandy's pregnant because Santa left little baby shoes. And, um, oh, Pharaoh had on a baby patrol jacket on. Congratulations, Brandy. Cody, you're, you're punching above your weight class. It's never going to be the same now. But yeah. And Cody Rhodes definitely was punching above his weight class. And then Cody Rhodes is in a match. Uh, Cody Rhodes and Angelico. Uh, not Angelico. It's Angelico. Stupid Tony Schiavone. And, and Excalibur, you know all those Mexican tofe sucio spaghetti rolls? Should be able to say Angelico. Boo, Excalibur. Boo. Um, so Angelico, again, starts off. It's long limbs. There's all takedowns to that. A really good classic wrestling match. Um, does a big Mexican arm drag. It's always good to see. Um, and Helico starts to do some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He was in the guard. He's like, Come on, Cody, get in my guard. Get on top of me. I want to ground. I, I want to do stuff to you. I like that. Whenever I can see collegiate wrestling and shades of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or any other mar like true martial arts, it's not like karate kicks, but like someone did like uh, Capoeira, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Of also on top of my list, um, any kind of collegiate wrestling, that's always good. That always kind of gets a bump up. For the most part, it was a classic wrestling match. I mean, and Helico is so long and lanky. He did like a leg Nelson arm lock thing. I don't think I could even bend my arms to. Well, I could bend my arms to do that, but yeah, not the way he could though with his legs. I think okay. And then he, he was close to the rope. He couldn't reach it because his arms were trapped. So he bit the bottom rope. Um, then Cody got stuck in the Navarro death roll by Angelico. And Cody Rhodes gets out of that. Eventually Cody Rhodes hits the Cody cutter. Not even a crossroads. It's like Angelico's not even good enough for a finisher. A signature puts him away. So it was a good match. And then Team Taz comes out. They start to run down Cody. Uh, Sting shows up. Sting! Um, you know what? Cheeseburger match. Let's see. Let's go back to these notes. Um, yeah, Sting comes out. Uh, Miro's in the back. He gives an interview. Says, yeah, I got fined, but guess what? I don't care. Oh, excuse me. Eddie Kingston comes out, does a little promo, then Archer comes out. And then, of course, the Butcher and Blade come out, then the Lucha Brothers. And then eventually Pac comes out. So eventually we'll we'll have a Pac versus someone here. Archer and Pac kind of stare at each other. That was pretty cool. The height difference is amazing, but Pac's just jacked looking. Uh, Dustin Reynolds says he's going to have a match against someone. That seven idea was was terrible. He wants to take out the entire Dark Order. Because of the fact that they brought that idea up. That was so long ago. Then, oh, maybe then, like four or five matches. Then it was, oh, this was a 12. We need war games! Because we had a 12-man a tag team match. It was a best friend's top flight, Airwolf. And <laughs> oh, oh, Varsity Blondes. Taking on the inner circle. Um, starts off with Jericho and uh, Trent uh, Pil Pillman wants in. That's good. Pillman ha he has potential. He looks like his. I'll give him this much. He looks like his dad. He got his papa's genes. Um, really good. Chris powers him down. Pillman kind of takes it, but then Pillman does his flying stuff again. Flying Brian Pillman. Good stuff. It kind of references. Even um, I think JR referenced that too. So because it's good to that that JR cares. Then there was a slingshot into to the something. Um, and then Dante, who was part of Top Flight Airwolf. I mean, they even have the freaking wolf logo on their shirt. Just say you know we're we're Team Airwolf. Although someone is called, I think, Airwolf. And, of course, there's a TV show. 
I wonder how long the copyright lasts for on that. I know patents, like 10 years or so. I'm just happy when I don't get copyright violated. That's the only thing I know. I fought it once, and I won. And I was kind of shocked about that. I think I fought the, um, you can't, you can't copyright a national anthem. But you're right. Like, I'm right about something. I was like, with that, I was 89% sure I was right, but I didn't know. Um, yeah, so then it became the best friends versus LA, might as well have been LAX. Then there was a big hug o mania. He chair said that. <laughs> I think Tony got a chuckle out of that. Mix Cal looked at him, whoa, you're getting into this. Uh, the inner circle then swarmed Trent on the outside. Top flight, uh, the one guy, I don't know, the one guy did the standing sp- Standing Spanish fly has to be a finisher. I don't care what it is. Standing Spanish fly, finisher forever. Top rope Spanish fly, finisher. The most protected move in all wrestling should be the Spanish fly. A standing Spanish fly. Then there was uh, Jericho got in the match. Um, Sorry, get worked over. MJF gets his, his tag in. MJF gets the pin. Inner circle win. They show cohesion. It was a good match. It was actually a fun. It was actually a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we had Thunder Rosa, who sounds freaking amazing. Although I have seen pictures of Thunder Rosa without her face paint. She has to keep that face painted. But she looks so pretty with that face paint. And then she almost has that like fake Latin accent though. It's like she actually tries to do the Latin accent. Unfortunately, she was interrupted by a rebel. And of course, this leads then to being jumped by Britt Baker. Thunder Rosa should just break her arm, sexy Sarge style, and just... Go to either Impact or NXT. Don't go to don't go to WWE Thunder Rosa. Impact or NXT. Then we have SCU later. Oh, we we need to see the SCU later because they are in the worst town ever, and that's Jacksonville. And I tell you what, I can actually adjust myself in the seat without it sinking, so it's so nice and comfy. Although it freezes my camera up. So this video is going to be a little bit wonky, but that's okay. Um, so they take on the architects. They just start rapping. Um, they have like a rap battle. SCU comes out again. Uh, Christopher Daniels is the reincarnation of Freddie Mercury with that particular microphone. Um, I'll tell you what, Frankie Kazarian, I don't think he's aged literally since, since uh, TNA. I don't know what he does, but I'll tell you what, if I could look 34 forever, I'd do that. I'd sell my soul to the devil for that. I'd be really happy. Although I tell you what, I see some women and I, I know their ages because they have to, they always tell me the year they were born, even though I asked their month and date. I say, miss, you did not go well, did you? One day, the day I quit. My last day, I say that. It's like, you're 30. Lady, you look twice as old as I do, and I'm 40-something. Yeah, the Florida sun kills blonde-haired women and the smoking and just, I don't know, bad stuff. But Christopher Daniels, um, for the most part, SEU is in control of this match until Christopher Daniels gets distracted. And then it's kind of downhill from there. Um, Kazarian, and he's so much better. But uh, Christopher Tannell said the Blue Thunder brown Bomb, the claim. They, oh yeah, they won because they whacked the one guy with the head with either their boom box or their DJ table, and they called it the Young Bucks. It was an okay match. Um, you know, it was still a good. Uh, it was a ham sandwich, man. Actually, you know what? Because I expected SCU to win, they actually put over the younger team. I'll say it's a cheeseburger match.
Let me have the top flight interview. They want to take on um, someone. Who cares? Then, then we have the women. Um, it was Ivelisse and Diamante taking on Big Big Soul and Serena D. I'll tell you what. I was so happy that it did not feature Big Soul, but it kept her as one of the supporting actresses, the supporting actresses role. Um, it featured really heavily Serena Deeb and either Ivelisse or Diamante. Ivelisse or Diamante could go any day of the week. Serena Deeb could go any day of the week. Big Swole can go for five minutes on a Tuesday morning. Yeah. Starts off with Ivelisse and Serena Deeb. Very, very technical match. I do, again, if you're going to have a really technical... Wow. These women are having a really technical match. Yeah, this is AEW. Whoa, they lost some of their talent pool. That's good. I was shocked at that. Yeah, um, big swole she gets in. Um, not doing bad, but again, because she's in a tag team situation, all of her weaknesses are hidden. Um, what else? Serena Deeb did that draping neck breaker, and then the woo figure four. And once, once anyone in an AEW crowd puts on a figure four, you know, the AEW, woo, woo, um, woo, 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 and all night long. Uh, Evilly and Diamante, they do get in their, their good double teamwork. I mean, there's a reason why, although it would be neat to see if they had a belt. Having the medal is nice. Having the belt looks more professional, has a little bit more prestige behind it. I mean, they could have the first ever. I mean, they could have been the first ever women's tag team champions. That would have been really good. They could actually run with that. And they could take on, yeah, other teams. They could come to the NAWA and be announced as the AEW Women's Champion. They go to get Impact. So, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go belt for, we'll go champion versus champion for champion. That would actually be really cool to see. Um, Big Swole hit a headbutt. And then Swole actually won. The standing cloverly. I was shocked by that. Uh, Ivelisse and Diamante tap out Big Swole and Serena Deeb win. I'll tell you what. Again, it hid her wick. It hid Big Swole's weaknesses. Showcased her strength. This was actually a cheeseburger match. Hey, Della Rose. And then what's her face? Jumped in. They jumped Serena Deeb. Big Swole, um, Velvet Sky, uh, Velvet Dream, yeah, Velvet, Velvet Dream, I guess, or, or no, Red Velvet. Too many cake types. I made the save. Yeah, it was okay. The best friends cut a promo. FCR then cut a promo. Jr. Jr. got the finger. He got the finger point, the finger wag from Tully Blanchard. That was okay. Uh, then we had Joey Janela versus Kenny Omega. This was actually pretty good, mainly because for the most part, Kenny Omega was toying with Joey Janela. This was a kind of a ha-ha joke match. And at least Kenny Omega played up to be because um, Don Kals was just walking around. What are you doing? Like, 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 oh, yeah, that's it. Kenny hit him again. Oh, that's it. Oh, that can't feel good. Look at that punch that Kenny Omega just delivered. You know what, Kenny? Just to give the audience a replay of that, hit him again. So Don Kals was so good in that. Then, then he's like, hey, hey, Kenny, do you want to do your own live commentary? He's like, Kenny's like, sure, yeah. Here, here I'm going to punch you in the gut this time. Ah, uh, kick you in the gut. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, here, I'll make up for that. I'll kick you in the gut again. Ah. Uh, uh, and I watched this unique spot using a chair. And they had the, the garbage can. Um, actually, it was pretty Actually, it was pretty entertaining. I was shocked by that. Um, so Joey goes right after Kenny Omega. Don, Don, <laughs> Don Callis takes him like that. was so good. Uh, Kenny Omega, for the most part, was in his shirt all the time. He's like, he doesn't even care. Then he then he finds the the cookie sheets. What are cookie sheets doing underneath the wrestling ring? I could understand if they were in like the catering section and they find cookie sheets, but who just or if they or if they come in a garbage can? If you actually bring in a cookie sheet, say, well, maybe he went back from catering and brought in a cookie sheet. Makes sense. Why are they just like underneath the? They put some weird stuff underneath the ring, like kendo sticks, barbed wire baseball bats, cooking sheets, oh, weird stuff. 
The fire extinguisher I can kind of understand because there is a fire code. Chairs and tables, yeah, because that's the place to store stuff. Kind of makes sense. But yeah, some other things just don't. Uh, I mean, Kenny Omega just starts beating up Joey Janelle with those. Um, then there's always hubris involved. Joey Janelle get the, eventually gets his thing. Sonny kisses us up at the table. Uh, puts Kenny Omega on top of that. Joey Janelle has a big leg drop onto that. They get back in the ring. It's all Kenny Omega. Uh, Janelle eats a couple of V triggers and eventually a one one win angel. We know what happens after the one win angel night night time. Or uh, Bob Bit, Bob Bit, whatever he says. I can't even pronounce it. Kenny Omega wins. I'll tell you what, I was entertained. Oh, I want to know where is where was Kenny Omega's AAA Mega Championship belt? If he's going to be the collector of belts, he has to wear every belt to every show. Like he can have the AAA Mega Championship on underneath and showcase on top the um, AEW belt. And when he collects some impact belt, he can show that off too. Overall, solid cheeseburger match though. And overall, a solid cheeseburger show by AEW. I mean, nothing you really didn't have to miss. It was actually fairly decent. Well, let's take a little break. And now let's see how fast I can wrap this up because let's talk about some SmackDown. I might honestly just edit that video tomorrow morning too. I could do that. Doesn't well the editing process it's not gonna take that long. So SmackDown it starts off, actually SmackDown's pretty quick too. Um KO eats, KO calls out Roman Reigns. Um Paul says, Yeah, you know what, you're 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 a you're um, a masochist, you just like to hurt yourself. Um, Kevin Owens, so Kevin Owens goes backstage. Roman, then Roman Reigns turned to me in the ring. That one step ahead, Kevin Owens, he's like, I'm not a bad guy. I'm just the guy. That sounds so much better than suffering sucker tash. Um, and I hate to tell you, Roman Reigns, Canadians really don't have Chiefs. They have Mounties. Yeah. And um, then Jey Uso comes in. He, he jumps Kevin Owens. We have a two-on-one. There is no, there is no El Generico to save Kevin's theme. Again, this is the whole title of this video. That's a good title. That was good. Um, backstage, Roman and Jay. Jay is such a yes, and it's like, yeah, I'll go do your bidding for you. Then we have our first match. Um, it was the Street Profits and Dolphin Root. I was wrong. I actually, th I actually thought they would be part of the TLC match. Actually, no, I'm not wrong. That was one of three choices I had. I chose the Bobby Lashley Matt Riddell match right there. So my predictions actually I'm surprised it still stands. That's impressive. Is this rolling around? Oh, that's why it sounds funny. Oh wait a second. Let's see here. I forgot something. Oh, that's, uh, WWE time. Get this shirt out of here. There we go. Now it feels more WWE-ish. Again, I have my Macho Man shirt on. Pop the Macho. It's always. And actually, the shirt has to get washed, too. Yeah, then we have the Street Profits. Oh, it did get chilly without that shirt on, though. And we have the Street Profits taking on Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Um, this was a fun enough match. Um, Dolph and Roode, they tried to, uh, to double team. It's pretty good. The... Uh, Free Profits are much better at it. They did the double drop kick. Uh, Dolph missed the kick, which led him into a roll-up. That's the whole kind of theme of this match, is that who can roll, who can successfully roll up the other team person first. Uh, Rude, as Ford went up to the top rope, Rude just, like, shoved him right off it. And, he, and Ford has to be careful with, if, with his selling. You do not want to try to oversell one Dolph Ziggler. Because Dolph Ziggler has been through it all. Ford looks like he actually landed like flush on his rib cage against the barricade. And that is actually kind of, it is a real barricade. Montez Ford then is selling the whole ribs, dropped, 
Toph drop kicks him in the belly. That was funny. And then he then Toph puts him in the stretch, which is like a basic gut wrench with like a leg trap. It's I, I think it's actually like a Greco Roman move, except for you're trying to tilt him. In this instance, he's just trying to stretch him. Again, Dolphin Rude, when they have Montez Ford in the corner, the classic heel double team. Always good classic stuff. Um, Dolph goes for something with a pin, uh, very collegiate style pin attempt. That looked, again, nice. That's probably why I give this match just a high rating because it was v a very, very, very technical match. And I do appreciate that. Dolph and Rude, they missed their double team, though. Not so much a heel miscue, but that allowed uh, Dawkins to get the hot tag. Hot tag, again, very classic. Big man hot tag. Um, the underhook neck breaker, that looked great. Dolph, however, Dolph hit the assisted famous herb with the aid of Robert Rude. Dawkins countered that with a pop-up spine buster, whatever he called it. And then... Ford went off the top ropes, but he landed wrong. He was supposed to land across the chest because Dolph Ziggler did not even move his knees. And Ford landed right on top the knees of Dolph Ziggler. Dolph couldn't do anything about that. That was Ford's fault. He just misjudged something. Then they try for a series of roll-ups. Of course, Rude tries to hold the trunks first. That doesn't work. But Ford, however, knows how to hold the trunks, too. Hooks the trunks of Robert Roode in the roll-up. Street Profits win. I'll tell you what, it was a good technical match. It was entertaining. The roll-up made sense. Whoa. This is a surf and surf match. He can't go for this tomorrow. Yes, it'll only take me... 5.30. Yeah, I can figure something out. Then, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and, and Robert Roode start yelling at Lil Nate. Lil Nate goes bonkers. I'll have you suspended! Urgh. Lil Nate hulks up. Uh, Kevin Owens is still backstage. He gets jumped again by Jay Uso with a chair. There's a Bianca Bell air promo. Oh, then there's a little Firefly Funhouse. That's oh, going to be a Firefly Inferno match. Yep, that's right. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, then we had the women's tag match. And oh, my goodness gracious me. Ruby Riot with that short hair. She looks so utterly amazing. She looks like a pixie. It makes me want to do... No, I, I can't say that. She's she's dating someone else. But Ruby Riot looks amazingly cute with short hair. I wonder if the curtains matches the drapes. Oh! I digress a little bit. But, uh, holy hot Ruby Riot, though. Um, it was the Riot Squad taking on Billy Kay and Tamina. And even Liv, even Liv went all all green around her eyes. I do like it when I can see the tag team members actually dress the same. That, that makes sense. And Billy Kay and Peyton Roy should never have broken up. They don't know what to do with them. Billy Kay's trying to find another tag team partner. She's obviously a tag team specialist. And man, does Billy Kay have a pair of lungs? Woo! I wonder if she's a screamer in bed. Or... Oh! I'm sorry, folks. I digress. <laughs> I'd like to find out, though. Um, Tamina just starts in the ring. She just beats up Liv, tosses Liv into the corner, then beals her across the ring. Uh, Ruby Wright tagged in, kind of for the most part, same faith. Same fate for Ruby Wright. Um,. Oh, I had a terrible thought during this match. What if Billy Kay's Oscar's... What if Billy Kay or Peyton Royce's Oscar's tag team partner? Oh, my God. No, that's just not even cool. Such a terrible thought. It's midnight. 
hurry up. I'm going to turn into a gourd soon. My computer is going to turn into a spaghetti squash. And uh, then Tamina beats up, again, the Riot Squad. Billy Kay slaps her, her, tags herself in. Um, Liv makes a save. Then the Riot Squad hits their um, stomp flatliner move. Billy Kay eats the pin. Yeah, I'll tell you who didn't win. Billy Kay didn't win because the Riot Squad won. And super cute Ruby Riot won. But still, it just seems something's lacking. So it's just a ham sandwich of a match. Tamina just looks disgusted too, so. Then there was the Carmella recap. Carmella is such a milf. I don't care what they say. A little recap between her and, and Carmella. There's a champagne toast. Still. <laughs> Carmella looks like a 50-year-old milf whore. I'll tell you what. I'd like to pour champagne on some women. I'd like to pour champagne. Then subsequently lick it off Ruby to Ride. But ah! My gosh. Or Billy Kay. Or I'm extreme. I'll do both. I probably shouldn't say that. He'd probably beat me up. Or Matt Cross would kick my ass. For sure. Billy Kay might like it. Who knows? She doesn't like marshmallows, though. I don't know. Marshmallows are pretty sugary, though. Unless they're well, just right. But I digress. The champagne, yeah, champagne toast is what it was. Uh, Kevin Owens... Gets put through a table in some suite. That was funny. And we have Otis versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Otis is in a singlet. Otis is definitely becoming uh, Team Team Alpha. Team Alpha. Um, um, American Alpha. Uh, it starts off a really classic wrestling match. Um, there was a talking to. Again, the knees, though, on the apron by Shinsuke Nakamura. You definitely have the very traditional wrestler on one side. The, the very strike heavy New Japan wrestler on the other. Again, it's a really good clash of styles. I can appreciate that. Uh, Shinsuke uh, kicks Otis. Otis begins to Otis up. Some big clotheslines. A splash in the clothesline. Shaggy able to no, no, no. Don't do that caterpillar. Otis looks confused. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura went for a suplex. Um, Otis went for a suplex. Actually got rolled up by Nakamura. That almost backfired. However, Otis hit his own suplex. Then the Vader bomb. Um, his lesson was, hey, you don't want to listen to me all the time. Do what you feel is right. And Sami Zayn's heading out the Sammy Awards and Biggie sneaks in and says, oh, ho, 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 ho. Um, Then there's the little Holiday Greens things. I don't think they're doing anything on... They're not doing anything Friday. That's Christmas. Um, it might be like a best of show. Kind of a nice thing. Hello, thank you for putting up with us for the holidays. Um, and yeah, Chad Gable said, 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 do what I mean, not what I say. That whole issue there. Then with the Sammy Awards. Yes, Sammy Zayn. Sammy Zayn is the winner of the Comeback of the Year Award. And he's dressed in such a cheap 70s prom tux. It was entertaining. Um, Sammy Zayn, Match of the Year. I could believe that. And then Big E won Superstar of the Year. Big E came out. He was so happy. Same thing. He said, what the heck's going on? I thought I rigged this. But no, you didn't rig it good enough. Because obviously Big E re-rigged it. And he broke your trophy. Boo. I like that trophy. I, I have to make a trophy. I might do that for... I might do that for New Year's Eve. I'd have like certain matches and then have like a best of best of show. Like I don't know, the best the the the, the crush beer can awards go to whoever. I don't know, I'll think I'll 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 I might ask people at work. Or I might do the best and worst of two thousand and twenty show. And just put random video clips on. Actually that makes sense. Indeed. The best and worst of wrestling 2020. 
probably isn't that hard. Um, then we had the Bailey uh, did an interview. And then this, of course, led to the Bailey versus Bianca Belair match, which is pretty, which is actually fairly decent. Uh, Bianca Belair just taunts Bailey. Um, Bailey again. She has definitely the ring generalship. She knows when she's outside the ring. Starts to work over the left arm of Bianca Belair. Eventually, in the ring, Bianca is much better though. Uh, while Bailey still goes after the sh the shoulder and arm. There was she countered the Bailey to the belly to Bailey or Bailey to belly suplex, whatever they call it. <laughs> However, Bailey hit the snake eyes. And Bailey even tried the dirty pin, but she's not very good at it. She got caught by the by the ref. It was uh, Bianca Belair tried the power lift, power bomb. Bailey raked the eyes, did the rose plant. It's good to see Bailey with that rose plant finisher. Bailey won. I'll tell you what, it was a good match. It's going to set this feud up well, hopefully into. Well, I don't know. It might make it to WrestleMania. But they could set this up definitely for the Royal Rumble. So it was a good solid cheeseburger match yeah I'm gonna go to bed after this I have to shower too I just want to sleep and sober up um, then finally the closing moments of the show Roman Reigns he's in the ring uh, Kevin Owens comes through the rings through all the tables <laughs> um Kevin Owens batter you. I do like the fact, and I don't. I guess I can legally do because they do own the rights to ECW. When Kevin Owens got beat up, he went through like three tables. It was a power bomb through one table, Smoan drop through another, something else through another. Kevin Owens there's broken. Roman Reigns and and Jey Uso just decide to bury him in the garbage, the tables, ladders, and chairs. On top, they would hit the, the chairs on top of the table that was on top of Kevin Owens, so that's kind of unique. Um, Kevin Owens honestly should have bled. Kill, Steen, kill. But that was really good. Kevin Owens still sets up at the end. Roman Reigns like, really, Kevin? You just don't learn. So that was a really good go-home segment, and I swear I could hear them piping in, ECW, ECW. ECW, ECW. Oh, so that was Raw, or uh, SmackDown. Again, a good cheeseburger show. But more importantly, you can see this guy, the one, the only, Hobo Tom. At the, probably by the time this video goes up later, later today, because I'll probably put this up Saturday morning-ish. Saturday morning I can put it up. It's not gonna take yeah, it's not gonna take twenty minutes to do this. So let's get freaking all I'll just pop another soda in my system. Get more caffeinated, keep me going for another yeah, half half hour. Um that way this can go up Saturday morning. Because Saturday evening I'm gonna be at the Daytona One Center. I'm gonna be I have my camera charging up. I do have to find my professional grade notebook so I can take notes on NAWA. It's coming here today, Tony Beach Live. Hopefully, something else to put on. The Door of Wrestling. I don't know. We'll see a digital tickets. I don't know. Maybe they just give out like free stuff. So you can see this guy, Hobo Tom. And if you say, dude, don't I see you on the YouTube? So like, yeah. You want to give your video a shout out? You'll get your own video shout out. I'd like to thank. Everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And then Friday, uh, Saturday night, probably more likely Sunday morning, I'll put up the video of what goes on in a real-life wrestling show. Because for me, I think it's 